Hi, today I'm going to talk about how to use two of my free tools, the new divider designer together with the five-sided box designer to create custom game box inserts. Hi, welcome to Gray Lightning, my video blog about making things and playing games. And in my last video, I introduced a new free tool called the Five-Sided Box Designer. And what it does is make it very fast and easy for you to generate SVG drawings to drive your laser cutter or any other machine that uses SVGs to uh, cut a five-sided box to your specification. If you haven't seen that video, I'll put the link to that here so that you can check that out. Today I'm introducing another new free tool that I think is a great companion piece to the box designer, and that's the divider designer. And what it generates are custom interlocking dividers like this. This was my first test piece I cut just to make sure everything was working okay. So you use these to organize boxes. It could be a custom uh, insert for a game box. It could just as easily be organizing a drawer in your workshop. And the simplest version of using this tool is just to say, here are the dimensions of the inside of my box or drawer, and I want this many rows and columns. And the tool then, as a default, automatically allocates all the space evenly into those rows and columns. But most organizing tasks are not going to be that simple. And a game box is a really good example of that. And I've picked a game here today that is really, I think, one of the hardest ones to do, and that's Wingspan. Now, if you're not familiar with Wingspan, first of all, it's a beautiful game. And, um, but what makes it challenging from, for this task is it has a lot of big pieces. One of those is a really wonderful card box. It's a great storage item in and of itself. It has three uh, card sections inside of it. All the cards in the game fit inside of this. And this is wonderful, but it takes up a lot of space in the game box. So that's one challenge you need to work around. That's what this big section here at the top is for. Then you have these large player boards, and there's five of them, so they're about this thick as a group, and there needs to be space for them to sit inside. So they're gonna sit on, side of the, on top of the dividers. And on top of those is the, always the largest thing usually in your box, which is the manuals. They're thin, but they, they take up a lot of uh, territory. So they sit on top. What I've done here then is I have created an insert that is the height of the game box, of the card box, and leaves enough space for it. it also some other components that are quite large that need to fit in that, that's uh, figured into this second row here. I have a box, and now the way I'm using boxes here in, in concert with the dividers is a way to subdivide dividers into even smaller sections and self-contained sections. So this particular one is the height of the, uh, the dividers, the inch and three quarters of the dividers. What that means is when I put these player boards in on top of the dividers, they will seal the top of that box and nothing will fall out of it when you're moving it around. This final row here, however, I have enough uh, space next to these components where I could create a series of boxes that fit well into that row and are the full height of the game box. So when you put the lid on the game box, it seals the tops of those and nothing falls out of them in transit. So I'm gonna show you, uh, you have to think through what you want, but once you've decided what you want, you can execute it very quickly. Everything that I've designed here, the divider and the boxes, took about a half hour total to uh, create the drawings for those. So it's really amazing. It makes it um, easy for you to be accurate with your calipers and measuring the thickness of the wood. The more accurate, accurate you are in that measurement, the better everything is going to fit together. And those interlocking sections here on the dividers will be tighter. 
but it's easy to do because all you're doing is measuring once and putting the information in and the program does everything else for you. So I'm going to show you today exactly how I use these two tools to create this custom insert. So let's start with the design process. First, I took measurements of all of the rigid components that I wanted to include in the box. My main goal was to get rid of all the Ziploc bags and to get those beautiful tokens into wooden boxes. Wingspan has this nice diagram on the side of the box that tells you how to put everything in and it does fit with the Ziploc bags, but it's a very tight fit and I needed some more space. The diagram has you putting this really cute bird feeder dice tower into the box. You open, break it into two different pieces and put it in. But I know that I plan on upgrading this by making a wooden version of it, so I don't need that in my box, and that gives me the extra room I need. I plan on keeping my dice tower out on display. I made a plan for how I was going to lay it out, and I went to the divider designer. I'm going to be working in inches, and the internal dimensions of the game box are 11.25. Let's change the scale here on the preview window so you can see the whole box as it changes. And then the second dimension here is also 11.25. It's a square. And the height I want for the dividers is 1.75 inches, which is the height of the card box. Then I say, how many columns and rows do I want? And I'm going to say I want five columns and three rows. If those numbers don't match up with what you saw in the video, you're going to see here in a second why we need those numbers. But first I'm going to go and I'm going to change the material thickness. The default is 1 8 of an inch. I'm going to go to a nominal 1 8 of an inch, which is actually 3 millimeters. It's a little bit smaller. The design I decided to do has dividers very close to the edge of the box. So I put in 0.125, which is a full eighth of an inch, as the size of the first column. The second column is going to hold the card box. So the internal dimension for that is 5.25, the width of the card box. The width of the scoring pad is three and a quarter inches. And finally, for the last column, I say, once again, 0.125. That leaves the fourth column a flex column, and it just calculates how much space is left. For the rows, I do something similar. I just go in and I put 1.125 for the first and last rows to put dividers very close to the edge of the box. The terms rows and columns are arbitrary. As long as you're consistent, everything will turn out fine. The summary tells us how many dividers we're going to get. I'm going to say that the, my material size is 12 by 12 inch boards. Everything is going to fit and I can name the file name and I hit download. The SVG is then in my download folder and when I click on it, this is what I see. I will of course be rearranging these on my cut sheets. As for the boxes, I will be doing that in the five sided box designer and the dimensions I need to uh, make decisions about those boxes come directly from this preview window. So I would take a screenshot of that. You want to make sure those boxes fit inside of those spaces. Once you have the dimensions, you can watch this video and see just how easy it is to make those boxes. For this project, you'll want to be entering the external dimensions of the box. The next thing I do is lay them out on my 12 by 12 inch sheets so that I'm ready to cut them. Let's take a quick look at the cutting and finishing. I cut everything on my We Create uh, laser cutter. I used 1 8 inch basswood, but when I measured it, it measured at 3 millimeters. And it took about 13 minutes to cut this sheet of dividers. I use super glue to glue my boxes. I lay them out interlocking like this and then I just run the glue on the parts that extend beyond the body of the piece and I use these granite blocks to help me hold them together while I work. I decided I wanted to leave some of the wood natural and then to use a very light gray stain and for this I needed to sand the pieces so I sanded off 
all of the laser smoke edges using my little handheld sander. I always use this Minwax stain and this gray is really just kind of like a white wash but it's a gray wash and you put it on and wipe it off right away and and uh, it's very subtle and I think that matches the wingspan aesthetic. I left the inside of the boxes and the dividers natural and here are the finished boxes. I've decided I want to go back and put a clear coat on the inside so that where the super glue came out will blend in. So here is how it all goes together. There's the dividers and the boxes in place. Here's how it looks with kind of the first layer of contents. And then the final piece is the player boards and the manual. Everything fits with room to spare. So if you have a favorite game that needs organizing, please try these out and let me know how it works out for you. I'd love to see any projects you do with it. The next tool I'm doing is a complete custom card box designer. If that's interesting to you, please subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications.